everyone. My name is Asif Khan, and I am the Director of Innovation and Technology at Dexcel. And today, we have Ben with us. So Ben, uh, thank you very much for taking out the time. And uh, why don't you give us a quick introduction about yourself, uh, who you are, what you do, and some brief intro? Sure. Um, thank you, Asib. Um, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Ben Hale. And I currently serve in the role of Senior Vice President of Engineering at GTL, heading into my third year here. Prior to this, I helped run Marriott.com at Marriott International for about 13 years. I, I guess I feel I've had somewhat of a standard career path coming up through software development, information systems degree, then out of school, I worked at such companies as EDS, Accenture, um, Thompson Corporation. And I also worked at what I'd call a dot-com builder during the ups and downs of that cycle. So I've seen the uh, startup side of things as well. Right. So, I mean, you have seen the whole nine yards or whole cycle of the stuff from starting all the way from startups and then uh, seeing the companies going, uh, getting out of the startups and maybe moving towards small and medium enterprises and whatnot. Yeah, that sounds exciting. And uh, with excitement, uh, it has like come up that 2020 has been full of excitement and surprises so far. And uh, what people say that they have sort of observed uh, nothing like this before in their lives. So what lessons or what things you have observed in 2020? Well, you can, you can certainly say that again. Um, this has been probably one of the most, uh, you know, different years than any of us have ever experienced. Um, I think about many times <clears throat> how cultures and societies have been gravitating towards kind of um, instant gratification and desire for faster results and um, answers. However, this global pandemic has been so contrary to that mindset. I feel the most important thing I've learned is the importance of patience, communication, and empathy. Um, I often think about, I had a birthday um, somewhat early in the pandemic, um, first week of April, and thinking about how, how strange it was and how different it was. However, in just a few short you know, months, every person in the world will have had a birthday during this situation. Yeah, um, right. I think this year has uh, forced us to realize that everyone's situation is different. And while we certainly um, had some ups and downs throughout the year, they varied widely from person to person and friend and family member. Right. Um, this is why I feel patience, communication, and empathy are so important, and we can't rush in with an evaluation or a judgment or even with an answer because the impact um, wow. is different between different people and to a different degree. Sure. So combining patience and empathy, hopefully we can use communication to strengthen bonds and team cohesion in a time when it may be you know, needed the most. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, as you just also talked about uh, in your introduction that you have seen like the whole cycle, startups, small and medium businesses, enterprise, etc. cetera. Um, I mean, team management and teamwork is sort of crucial um, to, uh, to companies of all scale, be it startups or be it uh, like as big as fortune companies. So in your opinion, is there a secret sauce uh, that can be uh, used or employed in the growth of any company? Um, I, I guess I would say there might be a couple of secret sauces out there, but um, I would have to say that a shared understanding of what the company growth objectives are mm -hmm. is very important. They may be, you know, revenue oriented, new markets, acquisitions, or new products. Um, and there also needs to be a shared excitement and understanding of how all team members can contribute to those goals. Mm -hmm. So many times, you know, 
uh, corporate objectives are are well understood by the executive and senior management level, but they're not always as um, much shared and understood or comprehended by all team members. Sure. And sure. I think that that that's very critical to, you know, share that understanding so that everybody understands how they fit in. Mm-hmm. One of the things um, our head of product calls uh, big crazy idea meetings. And everybody comes to these um, with new ideas about evolving our existing products or describing new products or new industries. And they're just a, a ton of fun and keep everybody engaged with, um, you know, a sense of how they can contribute. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, that sounds, sounds like a good idea and people can um, come with an open mindset and they can talk their mind out, right? So. Yeah. And talking about minds, I I mean, uh, what we have also observed that when organizations are growing, then there are two things. I mean, processes are very, very crucial in the growth of any organization, especially when they are scaling. However, startups, uh, in startups, we have seen more agility. I mean, more um, people are doing multiple stuff. I mean, small uh, junior team members wearing multiple hats, same person is doing all the way from customer support to rolling out production code. All of these things are like taken care of in, in like an agile fashion. People come forward, they work in cash teams and get things done. So, uh, I mean, what in your opinion uh, is some of the team dynamics that would be crucial in the success of uh, any team or any organization per se? Yes. I mean, speaking about agile, I guess I would, you know, say that it's a mindset in which we, we know that we don't have all the answers and only through experimentation and testing hypothesis can we learn enough to identify our next steps and actions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for an agile mindset, um, one in which we're open to new ideas, you're not fixed on what, um, things you think the answer is and your vision you know has to be well understood and a lot of times I I feel that people confuse you know the vision with the um, the end result and many times the vision is where you're going but defining the incremental steps getting there is how you develop great products Um, too many times you know, we, we think we know what the customer wants or what they need. And, you know, without incrementally making adjustments and testing those hypo- hypotheses, you can certainly create a product um, that is never adopted. Mm-hmm. So, right. you know, it, in the end, basically don't try to come up with the whole solution or blueprint um, to execute on, but have a good vision of what you're after, then identify the chunks of work mm-hmm. that can really get you there. Sure, sure. So coming back to the two uh, things you talked about, empathy, uh, creativity, right? So would you say that creativity is more important in a team lead as compared to empathy? Or empathy will be more important as compared to creativity? It, yeah, that, that's a great question. And um I guess I would say that empathy just edges out creativity um, as being more important. Okay. And the way, the way I look at it, um, empathy is a cornerstone to building the relationship with your team. And without that really strong and positive relationship, you may miss out on the collective creativity that you get from everyone. Mm-hmm. Because as a lead, um, you will want to tap the creativity of all team members. Mm -hmm. Um, And hopefully creativity kind of breeds, you know, more creativity. And and the only reason I say that empathy edges out creativity is that some solutions, they they don't always have to be so creative, but they get the job done. Mm -hmm. However, if you don't have empathy, you may not have the right team dynamics and relationship to deliver those solutions in an effective manner that you need. Right. So t- team management, if we talk about, then there is a component, which is, I mean, a sub you can say, which is also talent management. 
So, I mean, when, when you have a team, they are talented, right, in your opinion, or maybe for the need of the project or the organization, that's why they are part of the team, right? So, so talent management, in your opinion, is going to be the only the HR responsibility or it's the team lead's responsibility as well to manage this talent by working hand in hand with HR or maybe calling some shots individually. What do you think? Um, H- is only HR's responsibility? I would say absolutely not. You know, while they do have an important role to play, it's definitely a partnership Mm -hmm. um, between HR and all managers of others or leads within the organization. You know, it's important for HR to have a good understanding of markets and demand for Mm -hmm. resources since they have, you know, many times they have a responsibility for pay equity across the enterprise. But it certainly should be a partnership in that talent management. Um, and, and also we should realize that our team members um, many times are our best sources of new talent when openings arise. I, I work very closely with my HR team in the sourcing, screening, onboarding of new talent, but the talent management in the long haul, I would say falls more on my sure. shoulders as a leader and my organization. Sure, sure. So, uh, I mean, we are seeing that quite a lot of emerging technologies are coming up. New developments are happening every day. So, do you think that this will actually, I mean, be a key sort of a, a parameter or key, a key thing in impacting the retention of team members? Yeah, I mean, we we certainly, you know, working with software and technology, we probably have one of the fastest evolving, emerging <laughs> new capabilities sure. and yeah. techniques coming our way all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's certainly important for team members to embrace those new technologies, especially when they can provide value to the customer. Um, and what I found is that you will have some team members who are really excited and um, motivated. they have... Yeah, motivated, and they want that new, new all the time. Um, and on the flip side, it's also something you have to energize your team around when, you know, the adoption is not as eager, um, mm-hmm. s- eagerly sought out. And um, so, you know, it's that balancing act of, um, you know, feeding those who are hungry for it and really you know, looking for things to make their job exciting and um, keep their skill set sharp. Sure. But also encouraging team members that may be more timid to adopt something new, getting them the motivational factors that, you know, help them adopt to new um, sure. opportunities. Sure. So, I mean, uh, if I ask you that in 2021, what you would like to do differently as in your current role and beyond 2021, what those, what that one or two things would be? Um, so I, I think that, um, you know, as leaders, we get wrapped up into what I would call um, project work and um, wanting to do, you know, the valuable work for the company. And sometimes the, um, you know, things such as removal of tech debt or automation or cloud adoption um, Mm kind of gets put on the back burner um, because this mountain of project work is like always consuming every every minute of every day. And so for 2021, I would, you know, like to set some concrete goals around things like um, tech debt removal and um, cloud migration adoption. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't make it a goal and, you know, kind of get teed up as something you're going to accomplish, Mm -hmm. it naturally has this like taking taking second stage to the mountain of project work. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, I mean, in the last... Uh, I mean, we talk quite a lot of team and team essentially at the end of the day, uh, every person in your team is a resource and is an individual as well, right? 
So people have different backgrounds. They are diversified. Some are highly skilled. Some are like, I mean, mediocre. Some are like low skilled. I mean, there are all sort of people. And they are all over the place in the team. So how do you typically overcome the challenges of dealing with someone who is diversified as well as a highly skilled resource? What are the challenges in there? Yes, I, I would, um, you know, this probably brings our conversation full circle back to patience, empathy, and communication. Mm -hmm. you're, you're right that each individual team member, you know, um, is different and, um, you know, they need to have a clear set of goals and objectives and regularly discuss those with their manager or lead. Um, and this should be a two-way conversation where the manager learns about team members' challenges and successes and then attempts to coach in areas that may need improvement and provide feedback. Sure. Um, sure. Hopefully, diversity can be realized as an asset to your organization and the faster you realize that, I think it allows you to extract more from it. Mm -hmm. um, because diversity is a, is a great thing. And I believe it has a direct correlation to the amount of learning sure. that's possible in your organization. And having such a large set of different perspectives, you know, when it comes to evaluating ideas and options. Sure. So, uh, any last thoughts, Ben, on and uh, on the, on our topic that our scale teams the new currency really, in your opinion? And then we can close. Sure. Um, yeah, I would just encourage folks to, you know, never overlook the importance of the relationship. Build that relationship. Um, certainly this year, more than ever, people are going to need some extra encouragement connection. Um, you know, we do so much, uh, work and communication, um, through conference calls. So I would encourage from time to time, cut that camera on and, you know, it allows you to c connect in a way that audio doesn't always allow you to. Yeah. So I mean, uh, what you were essentially saying is that the picture has a thousand. I mean, picture <laughs> thousand words has a practical example now, right? Absolutely. Right, right. So Ben, thank you very much again uh, for your time today. It was very nice hosting you, and I hope that we will have you sometime again with a new and exciting topic. Thank you very much. Uh, that'd be great. Thank you very much too.